StartupRad.io, your podcast and YouTube blog covering the German startup scene with news, interviews, and live events. Hello and welcome everybody. This time around, I have the honor to welcome you to um, our This Month in German Startups show here on StartupRate.io. It's the one for January 2021. One month is already over. Who would have thunk? Um, as always, it's a transatlantic news recording with me, Chris, in New York City. Um, we will have, uh, you can still have a look, obviously, at our 2020 year in review. And I, as always, I also have the pleasure to be here with Jörn in Frankfurt. Hey, guys. How are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm relatively okay. And I'm still the German who actually answers <laughs> the question, apparently. Um, today, we are wrapping up January 2021 for you. Um, there's great news, actually, in the German startup scene. We have two new unicorns. We have a much anticipated IPO from Auto One, which will be raising at least 1.5 billion euros. We have Delivery Hero, which goes VC. And there may be Amazon TV or radio in Germany with some live broadcasts going on. But first of all, housekeeping, um, we, as always, have reason to be happy and a bit time to brag. Um, we have um, even more countries in which we are parts of the podcast charts. And um, we also found some resource for you guys in case you're into podcasting as well. Uh, we found a resource saying, listen up, here's your guide to European tech and startup podcasts in English. Uh, we are in it, but also a couple of other um, podcast shows. Which lets us already start with the top news, and I already hinted at it. We have two new unicorns in Germany. First of all, there's Mambu. It's Germany's newest fintech unicorn. And they offer banking software as a service. Uh, with Mambu, you can really say without them, there would be no N26, because they provide the software which enables challenger banks like N26. And we have a Munich-based HR scale-up called Personio, uh, which landed a 103.5 million Series D funding already and a 1.4 billion euro valuation. Um, we uh, have a related and um, add an additional article about this in our show notes where Startup Personio um, Joint Circle of Unicorns as the headline Technical University of Munich School of Management. They offer more information there, which lets us move on to um, Delivery Hero and you, Jörn. Yes, it does. And I just realized you have the much easier job here. <laughs> um, let's go to Delivery Hero. Delivery Hero raised 1.2 billion euros in fresh capital. This is 1.47 billion US dollars in new funding. They were selling, as they say, in hours, 9.44 million new shares for 132 euros each. Related to this, they use some of the proceeds um, to start their own corporate venture fund called DX Ventures with 50 million euros there is the much 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 anticipated auto one ipo and i think we talked about it like a zillion times um they'll be raising a minimum of 1.5 billion euros which is something like 2.2 billion us dollars they said in last statement they've been a little bit older versions um to this ipo and you see they they increased the funds they are going to raise by 500 million and they'll most likely be floating around starting of february so next startup news we can talk about how successful they have been as you guys know, I'm going through a lot of blog posts each day and there may or may not be an Amazon TV or radio station in Germany. Amazon has filed the necessary paperwork to get a broadcaster's license here in Germany. The filing dates to November 2020, but was just recently discovered. Wirecard, we keep you up to date. Just a small selection of the news here. Keep in mind, they're still an investive 
Investigative Committee ongoing. Oliver Samwer from Rocket Internet Samwers gave a private loan to Markus Braun, the former CEO of Wirecard, of 75 million euros, 91 million US dollars, which he demanded back rather harshly shortly before Wirecard filed for insolvency. And in Austria, there's an investigation against former Wirecard COO Jan Masalek. Of course, we blocked about him. Uh, you can find a link down here in the show notes. Is ongoing in potential bribery of an employee of the Austrian Constitutional Protection Agency, something like the NSA of Austria. Uh, he's supposed to have checked the solvency of porn sites for Mr. Masalek. I'm, I'm not too sure how he was doing it. Maybe he had a lot of fun doing that. I don't, I don't have anything to add to Wirecard. Um, in case you lost track, I guess uh, it's still worth remembering what is the big deal about Wirecard. Basically, the issue is everyone was kind of in love with them as being this... Um, crazy cool payment facilitating company um politics was on board because everyone is very keen that germany finally has a huge startup uh, success story but then it turned out that a lot of the uh, a lot of the stuff in the balance sheets was actually invented and the number that's always going around i think was that there was about uh, two billion of assets in the balance sheets who weren't actually there Maybe, Chris, we should do an, another wrap-up of Wirecard, uh, something like a, a starting end of summer. You guys know we only do uh, startup news until June, and then we pick up in September, and maybe we get together and do recordings. So during the summer break, we give you a wrap-up of the uh, uh, Wirecard story. Wouldn't that be cool? The story so far. Yeah, honestly. Let's see how it, how it develops there, because right now, it, I mean, it seems like a... Um, It seems like a mix between a, a crime procedural and a soap opera. <laughs> so we will see. But we are moving on to the ecosystem. And uh, there was some news in which, depending on your point of view, uh, German workers in Germany either got an additional day off at the beginning of the year or they got a very stressful beginning to the new year because Slack in Germany had, at the start of the new year, a big outage. Um, Uh, exactly on right on the first working day of 2021 we have some background um on that what happened exactly on january 4th in our show notes um we found a new survey which basically said that tech workers um want to relocate to germany more than to any other country in the world um Number two was the Netherlands, and number three was Canada. It's um, based on uh, relocate me, aside for tech workers looking for wake vacancies abroad. Um, they basically looked at the number of applicants in the respective countries. Germany starts with a test of a countrywide patient file called the E-Patientenakte, which means like e-patient folder. Um, the users can carry around all their medical files, x-rays, reports, etc., on their smartphone and then grant their physician or other respective doctors access. Uh, so if you want to know more about the digitalization and that health space related uh, topic, you, we have more. And Berlin remains the capital of German venture capital in 2020. Um, consultant company EY tracked 314 financing rounds there out of a total of 743 they found. Um, VC funding declined, though, in Germany in 2020 by 15% to 5.3 billion euros, 6.45 uh, billion US dollars. As always with those numbers, take them with a grain of salt because all this stuff obviously is rather complicated to calculate and determine. And the last news about the ecosystem in Germany and the surroundings of the startup world, the basics of the startup world is that in the most recent fintech ranking, Frankfurt is losing uh, one is losing ground. Um, they move from number three to number four, and number three is now Hamburg. It's a um, it's a German wide. 
study and uh, number one stays Berlin. Get right on talking about hubs here. As always, the order of the news is rather how we found them as well as with the cities. There's no other order. Let's start with my home turf, Frankfurt. Frankfurt-based provider of high-performance computing, Northern Data, raises 52.5 million euros, 64 million US dollars in new funding. Then there's Frankfurt-based Intertech Clark. They raise 85 million US dollars, 69 million euros venture capital with lead investor Tencent from China, owner of the famous um, app WeChat. We have an interview with the CEO, yes, of Clark, not of Tencent. Uh, you can have a look here. And Frankfurt, uh, Frankfurt Valley, our partner writes, developing towards an epicenter of the German games industry. A little bit south to uh, Frankfurt, um, home to the Operations Control Center of European Space Agency is the city of Darmstadt. We interviewed the Darmstadt-based robotics software startup Energy Robotics in June 2020, where they already talked about their intention to raise venture capital. Now they closed their 2 million euro VC round. Early Bird and several business angels like Paul Achleitner, head of the supervisory board of Deutsche Bank, for example, Gerhard Reuss, Martin Klessner and Andre Henkler invest 2 million euros altogether, not per person, in energy robotics. Of course, there's also a link to our uh, interview here. Merck KGAA, so meaning the German Merck company, because there's also one in North America, snaps up. German CDMO in a boost to mRNA portfolio, including for COVID-19. Going even more to the south, there's the beautiful city of Heidelberg, home to one of the oldest universities in the world. And there's the small town of Waldorf there. Maybe you've heard about it because it's the headquarter of SAP. SAP unit called Le Qualtrics. Sorry, heads for IPO. Let's talk a little bit about Munich. New unicorn Personia is from Munich, as Chris talked before. Munich-based Conox raises 80 million US dollars venture capital from impact investors Sano Capital and Athos, the family office of Strungmanns, Hexal, which is a former company, and existing investors like Alibaba. Um... Konox builds intelligent sensors for Industry 4.0. Munich-based Fintech Fidor Bank, a German Fintech pioneer, I do believe they have been around before there was even the word Fintech, is split up and sold to two bidders, Ripplewood Advisor from New York and Steria Moment from Paris. And Pepsi backs Munich-based sentenced air drinks startup Air Up. Whew. Chris, you got something else? Yeah, I already mentioned Hamburg, and in Hamburg there's the Tech Hub with uh, capital HH because that is usually the abbreviation for Hansestadt Hamburg. Uh, and um, they get a lot of money out of the German uh, coronavirus um, package. 35 million euros to be exact are um, designated to be invested into an entrepreneurship center in Hamburg to keep founders in the city. Um, it is part of the uh, startup project Science City there. We got some more information in, at the city of Hamburg and at Hamburger Abendblatt in our show notes. From Hamburg all the way to the southwest, Freiburg, where inside partners and existing investors invest 100 million US dollars VC capital in Freiburg based Jedox. Um, the company offers enterprise performance management software for company planning and analysis. So, quite a big um, deal there. And a little look right over the border to Switzerland, Zurich-based Blue Horizon Ventures, a VC focused on sustainable food, now closed their first round with 183 million euros, 221 million US dollars with more than 100 investors from 20 countries. That's it for the cities. Moving on to some company notes in a couple of different industries. And at first it's about 
Yes, it's about food, right? We are in the company section and food is always a good topic to talk and disagree about. Dish Order, German grocery wholesaler Metro is partnering with Google to offer competing offer to Liverando. The clue for restaurants, there is no fee. German food giant Dr. Oetker had their own beverage delivery service Durst Express, Thirst Express. Then they f uh, bought Flaschenpost, so message in a bottle, doing the same reportedly for 1 billion euros. Now they merge Durst Express into Flaschenpost. I know, complicated if you don't speak German. Fintech and finance is another interesting topic. Investors value the Berlin-based trade republic with 600 million euros is news we found, 735 million US dollars that is. Talking a little bit about N26, N26i's IPO with hiring of a new CFO is one of the articles we found, plus they are granted a banking license in Brazil. Also very well-known company from capital markets and asset management, Vanguard, they are the guys who came up with the idea of ETFs, will be starting an investment portal in Germany. They hired the head of clients for from market leader Scalable Capital for the Berlin-based team headed by uh, Jesper Warendorf, formerly RatePay, and Andreas Bittner, formerly with Solaris Bank. Sibylle Strack, former CEO of Berlin-based Fintech Con Constist, Contist, sorry, hired at Deutsche Bank as Chief Growth Growth Officer for Biz Banking. And Berlin-based Fintech Incubator Finleap shifts focus to test products for corporate clients. They don't want to be in entrepreneurs anymore. <sighs> Chris, I hear you got some more good news, right? Yeah, food, fintech, uh, we spoke about now. Uh, let's talk about the industry making the other industries possible sometimes. We got some more news for VC funds um, and financial plans to start a fintech venture capital fund in Berlin. Then um, 20 German health insurers invest in the Berlin-based venture capital fund Heal Capital with 100 million uh, euros to invest in health tech startups. And keep in mind the news of Delivery Hero Fund from before, or the Swiss one that we talked about. Um, we got a, just some little spotlights about investments in Germany. The digital road freight forwarder Zender raised a uh, $160 million series and finds European expansion, Road TechCrunch. We have... Um, some news about Peter Thiel, whose Valar Fund joins other investors in a 21 million euro venture capital round for credit card fintech Moss. They were registered in summer 2019 and are now valued at 100 million euro. And the Global Savings Group raises 12 million euro in their most recent financing round. For all of these stories, again, additional information in our show notes. All other news about German workers, new work, uh, and work-related stories. Not even half of the German employees would recommend Tesla as an employer, reports German tech blog T3N. Applicants post in forums and websites about chaos and arrogance, which is kind of a big story because especially um, surrounding Berlin in the suburbs of Berlin, where Tesla plans a huge new factory. Um, Tesla is a big story because of billions of expected investment money there. Um, we have a, a pretty like original subset of investors in Germany um, making their rounds in um, in the VC world, which who are uh, former soccer stars, <laughs> and we found one article. Um, looking at the question, what are the actual startups that footballers or soccer players uh, have their money invested in? Um, it's a story on Sifted, and it looks at players like Mario Götze, who invested in Frankfurt-based qualifiers, Philipp Lahm and Mats Hummels. Again, Elliot's stake complicates Rocket Internet's plan to the list there's some stuff going on there and berlin grocery delivery service named gorillas 
raised 44 million US dollars venture capital. Um, it's just, they're just taking care of the delivery. You still buy from the supermarket there, um, which just lets me gallop to our staying ahead of the curve news, where, for example, we are talking about digital banking opportunities of the future, all the other stuff you can find in our show notes. Famous last words, Jörn? Jörn? Uh, yes, um, Elliot, uh, Elliot Capital, that is an activist hedge fund and they want to make, uh, they want to uh, press out more money of Rocket Internet's listing. That was the story. And yes, of as always, it was just a pleasure talking to you, Chris, my friend. Totally leave. Totes my goats. Uh, have a good one. You too. Bye-bye. That's all, folks. Find more news, streams, events, and interviews at www.startuprad.io Remember, sharing is caring.